man. I've really done it now. I think I might have ruined the classic. If you're new here, I've been working on a 1972 Jeep Commando that I found in a field. It looked something like this. And after that, I took a 2000 Jeep Cherokee. It was wrecked, it looked something like this. I pulled it all apart and then made those two into one running, working, driving vehicle. I took two Jeeps that had no business being on the road ever again and think I made a great creation in the Krusty Commando that is now back and out on the road. You might be asking yourself, well, wait a minute, didn't you say you ruined a classic? Yeah, apparently I did. Thank you, user on the interwebs, for the comment here. I know, I know, I can't believe that I would have the audacity to spend all this time, all this effort, putting this Jeep back on the road just to ruin the look of a classic. Now you're probably like, wait a minute, I think it looks pretty good. Or, well, I mean, maybe not right now. It's, it's a little bit rough around the edges. I know there still needs to be some pretty up work done. And that's really what we're gonna talk about today, but let me show you how I apparently ruined the classic. Now, if you aren't familiar with the Jeep Commando, they have a super distinct look. I, I mean, I personally think. If you take the early model, they actually have the turn signals up by the headlights, kind of a wider hood. Look really different compared to a lot of the other vehicles that are out there, especially the Jeeps. You know, the grill setup's just a lot different, very distinct. And then in 72, they actually changed to more of what I would just consider like a Ford Bronco or International Scout front end look. Now, it's probably the least desirable front clip that I think Jeep has ever made. But I know after working on this Jeep for probably, I mean, a little bit over a year now, this front end, I just love it. Like, it's really starting to grow on me. It's become one of those, it's so ugly and unique and no one knows what it is. I just really have started to really enjoy the look of it. Now, the other thing with these Commandos is that the interior also has a, a fairly distinct look to it and the dash is especially looks, I mean, it's really cool. They, they've done a lot. The, the shape of it is just a little bit different than anything else you kind of see of that same vintage, I, I think. And I kept it in the yellow Jeep. So it looks something like this. If you're not familiar with what a Jeep Commando dash looks like, it looks like this. And then when I got crusty, there was no dash at all. So I knew I was gonna have to figure something out to try to make it look right and really make it something that I would enjoy driving. And as I mentioned, I went ahead and took an, a Jeep Cherokee along with this, and I'm trying to meld the two together, saving as much money as I can by reusing as many Jeep Cherokee parts as I can. And so with that, this is actually what I came up with for the Commando Dash, and apparently that's what has ruined the look and ruined the entire build of the Krusty Commando. Well, here you go, guys. This is the ruined look of a late model Jeep Commando that had a love affair with a 2000 Jeep Cherokee. I don't know, guys. What do you think? Did I just completely ruin this entire vehicle? Should I start over? Yeah, I'm thinking Rigor was right. It's probably time I need to go back to square one. So I didn't actually film a whole lot of this fabrication process and honestly I didn't film any of the process at all because I thought I'll just talk to it, let you guys see what it is and if you're doing something yourself, I'm sure you're probably gonna figure out how you want it to look, the different things, but I'll show you a little bit of what I've done, why I made some of the design choices I did. You know, hopefully that'll help you that are out there building your own commando. So the first thing I did was I had to go ahead and mount the steering column. I did that in an old video, so make sure to watch that if you're interested in the process that it took to get this late model Cherokee steering column mounted in the commando. The big reason I went with that is I now have cruise control, everything set with the actual steering column itself and then also the integrated wiper, all the other controls that go with a more modern steering column. So the headlights, the wipers, all of that's integrated within that column. Then I went ahead and moved on and mounted some switches. So let me show you those. So you can kind of see here, it's just an Amazon special six plug switch. And I absolutely love it because it was really easy to install. So I've got that there. And then also got my headlight switch here to turn all the lights on and off. There you go. 
So as you can see, really clean, really simple, not a whole lot there, but those switches will actually end up running anything and all the accessories I want. And there's only a few wires to run into the cab. I think this will probably be the only way I ever go again. I've wired all kinds of rocker switches in the past. This absolutely works great. The other piece, I went ahead and reused the Cherokee gauge cluster. So let me show you that. So just kind of cut this out to shape, added some trim here to kind of keep it up nice and neat. And this looks, I think, really good. You know, kind of took the CJ, you know, heritage where they used to put the gauges right in the middle. And then I went ahead and installed a transmission temp gauge. So that way I know what my transmission temps are running. I'm not sure if the cooler I installed is going to be big enough. So I really wanted to make sure I do everything I can to kind of keep an eye on all of that. So the other really cool thing, thanks Art for doing this, that really let me decide to keep the stock Cherokee gauge cluster is that one of the guys I've met through the Commando community and here on YouTube actually let me know that he was able to do some magic, if you will, and actually reset the odometer on the stock cluster to completely zero. So right now, well, that's how many miles I've driven so far. But right now I've got about 174,000 miles on this current cluster, on this current setup. And with a little bit of magic, I should now have zero miles. And I snap like that because I'll have to eventually switch this out. Um, but I'll show you guys, it's gonna be reset to zero, which I think is really cool because that means it'll be only the mileage since I finished the build on this Commando. And that to me was really important. I know it's not the zero miles vehicle, whatever. I mean, it's old, you know, but I have gone through almost all of it, you know, and I wanted to be able to keep track of what was been done, when, where, how, and kind of keep up a little bit easier with the maintenance piece, knowing this thing was a fresh build from zero miles. The other thing I went ahead and did was I actually installed an Apple CarPlay. So if you look here, let's see if it'll kick on. All right, so the Apple CarPlay, it's up and working. The center console, I went ahead and route. It's not finished. I'm gonna have to finish all this out, but you got the speakers installed. It even plugged in right here. So I can plug my phone in and get the Apple CarPlay up and going. I don't think I'll be able to do it while I'm filming on my phone, but all that just then plugs in. I actually have the Apple CarPlay for all my apps. Center console, Apple CarPlay, cruise control, all of those things are gonna be housed here. I did get a question from Life on the Ranch that was asking about what I was gonna do with the center console. So let me show you how that turned out. So Life on the Ranch, who's also building a late model commando. So definitely check them out um, if you haven't. Here you go, this is my center console setup. So I took a handle from just Amazon. I have a couple cup holders. They actually light up, check this out. Yeah, boy. So those will light up. And then I took the stock Cherokee piece here. It's actually a little busted up now, so I'm gonna have to replace some pieces on it. But basically I took one by one square tubing, made a shell, and then took plate steel and plated it out. So eventually that'll actually look a lot better. I'm gonna cover the edges with rubber trim. I wanna actually do some nut certs and get some nice flush mount bolts for it. But for now, I just did self tappers, get the plates installed, make sure everything's gonna work. More of a proof of concept, if you will. But there you go, there's my center console. And then you can see just from the side, I've got my transfer case shifter, my speakers, and then all of this will get plated in and finished out so you won't really see it look a little bit cleaner and nice. But overall, there you go, guys, the entire cockpit. Now, the last thing I did to ruin this Jeep was do a little bit of magic under the hood. Here you go, check it out. Push it open. Got the gas struts. Now, I get it. That's not the way it came. It's probably awful. I probably completely destroyed this Jeep, but I'm really liking it. And let me, I'll show you some close-ups of how I did this, but really I'll leave a link to the struts. I'm not sure if I need a little bit heavier duty strut. I mean, it definitely holds it up just fine, um, but it doesn't really push it up. So if you guys are familiar with these, maybe let me know. I've gone through three different weights. I think these are 65 pounds a piece. And so, to me, I just kept going up and up and up, and I also want to be able to keep it, like actually close it. I just wasn't really sure. So let me know if maybe you think I should just add a little bit more weight, but I mean, it definitely holds the hood up. Like that's not a problem, like that's going nowhere. Again, I'm really happy with the way these turned out. I'll leave a link. I'll show you a close up of how I mounted them. They were really straightforward. I would definitely recommend doing them in your late model Commando or even early model Jeepster if it's something you're interested in. So here, let me show you the close up. There you go, guys. So you can see just mounted right here. 
here with a couple nut certs. It comes up and mounts to the hood right about there. You can see where I messed up a little bit and actually had to drill an extra hole. I mean, who hasn't done that before, right? But it was a pretty quick change. You can see just from there to there, and then that bolts right in. I just removed the spring that typically holds this together, and there you go. That you now have struts installed on both sides that are just gonna hold this thing up without any effort. All right, there you have it. I've officially ruined a 1972 Jeep Commando by adding just a few personal touches of my own. Now, I will say I really focused on the dash, the interior, the hood hinges, some of the updates that I've been doing on this Jeep. And I know the test drive video looked amazing because it was amazing. But to full transparency, there were just a couple things that went wrong. All the small things. Oh! One. It was actually only running on five cylinders. That was really the main thing that went wrong. I was like, you know, just so excited we overlooked that. But I have now solved it. So I'm gonna be showing you guys what it took to actually solve that issue, get this thing running. It's now on all six cylinders. It drives great. I've had it going 60, 65 down the road, one finger, just eating up the bumps. It rides so smooth. Like I think it might ride better than any other Jeep I've ever ridden in. Well, most of the other Jeeps I've ever ridden in. It might even ride better in my truck. I mean, it's really, really, a really comfortable ride. I've really been enjoying it. And so again, I'll get all the updates on that coming up on a future video. And if you guys stick around, please like and subscribe because those of you that don't know, my brother's got an LS swapped 71 Jeepster Commando. And we're about to do, hopefully, fingers crossed, as long as we can make it, do a versus video on that. We're gonna see which brother actually built a better Commando. We're also gonna film a Riggs I Dig on his. So if there's any questions that you have about his 71 Jeepster Commando, please leave some comments below so I can make sure to answer those when I interview him about his Jeepster. And I say interview, I know everything about it already, but I'm gonna try to let him teach me about his Jeep that I've built most of. So, you know, it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be a little bit different for an interview. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching.